involved with the Copernicus program, which is on Earth observation. So we're able to, to look at climate change in a way that we've not been able to do before. Yeah, so Earth observation is just, done, you know, if you look at how we found out about the planet, even 50 years ago, you sent out people with a little measuring thing and they held it up on a stick and they went, this is what's going on here. And satellites give us, Copernicus is, and the core of Copernicus is the seven sentinels, there will be 16 Earth observation satellites that are circling the Earth. But it's not just about the satellites. They have ground truth measurements, they've got flights, balloon flights, plane flights, all kinds of things working together to get a big picture of what's happening on the planet. So it's, so it's not just uh, climate change as in temperature, but you're able to measure things like uh, methane, yeah, so the, the range is amazing. It, it's chemistry. There's things like um, synthetic aperture radar, which lets you get at how wavy the ocean is, which can tell you something about how high the wind speeds are. You can monitor ocean currents using that. So there's all these things that feed into the climate system: humidity, where the clouds are, what type of clouds they are, more and more. And it's just like it's the health check if you want to take the pulse of the planet this is the way to do it so one of the things that we're doing in cambridge through the cambridge climate lecture series is to think about well, how can we fix climate change what are the options open to us so how do we fix climate change the first thing that you and i think about as engineers although i'm not i'm thinking about think of myself as a physicist rather than an engineer is is knowledge you can't fix a system unless you understand how it works so for me uh, on the science side of things, there is a big priority in just understanding this engine, understanding how, what's happening, how it changes, and how those little changes change into other changes which affect something else. Understanding that system, that's thing number one. Thing number two is obviously motivating people to do something about it. But the thing about the knowledge base, and especially things like the satellites, is that it doesn't allow people to hide in the sense where, you know, people you say, oh, but how do you know? And what about China emitting all this stuff? And how about this? And there's always somewhere to sort of conveniently yes, so does that mean, push it under some other car. So can we begin to uh, attribute emissions to individual companies or individual countries or individual... Individual regions, I think that is definitely becoming uh, not just possible, but almost routine. But it's also showing the consequences in that, you know, if there is a particularly bad smog day somewhere, you can show whether that local pollution, whether it's local pollution, whether it came from somewhere else. And so actually you're connecting up the emitters and the people who suffer the downstream effects. And it's not always a simple comparison. However, once you start to see that, it becomes obvious that this is a global problem. It's not one country's problem or another country's problem. You need a consistent framework for everyone to say, look, the weather doesn't respect national boundaries. We, we can see that. 